If you want to get the best performance out of your studio monitors, in this video I'll help you find the correct placement for your speakers, how to connect the speakers to your audio interface, and the best settings on your interface and your studio monitors. But if you're new to this channel, my name is Kyle. Learn audio production at audiouniversityonline.com. When it comes to the placement of studio monitors, there are a few things that have a huge effect on sound quality. If you get these things right, it'll go a long way. The first is spacing. We want the location of each speaker and the location of your listening position to be equally distant, forming an equilateral triangle. Sit in your chair normally, exactly as you'll be when you're listening. You want the point of the equilateral triangle to be just behind your head. I recommend marking that location with a stationary object like a chair or a microphone stand. Adjust the width of the speakers until there's equal distance between each speaker and your listening position. You'll also want to adjust the angle of the speakers so that they're pointing toward you. The high frequency tweeters of your speakers are more directional than the woofers. So it's important to be on axis with the speakers to get the best possible frequency balance. Not only do you want to be on axis with the tweeters side to side, but you also want to be on axis with them vertically. This can either be done by angling the speakers up or down with foam wedges, or by propping the monitors up to a height even with your ears. Before connecting your speakers or turning them on, make sure that the monitor knob on your interface and the volume knobs on each speaker are turned all the way down. This will protect you from accidentally sending a loud signal through the speakers and potentially damaging them. There are three common connector types that you might find on your interface or your monitors. Quarter inch, XLR, and RCA. You could theoretically connect your computer's headphone output directly to the input of your studio monitors using a 3.5 millimeter to dual quarter inch or dual XLR adapter, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's much better to use an audio interface, which will give you higher quality outputs and a volume knob to control the output level. I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface and a pair of JBL studio monitors. Luckily, the interface has quarter inch outputs and the monitors have quarter inch inputs. This means I can easily connect them with a quarter inch TRS cable. Before we get into the best settings for your studio monitors, make sure to hit the like button. It'll help this video reach more viewers and it'll help the Audio University channel grow. I really appreciate it. Your studio monitors are in the right place, they're connected to a power outlet, and they're connected to your audio interface. With the volume knobs down on the audio interface and the speakers, it's time to turn the speakers on. Let's start by setting the gain. Adjust the interface volume up to about halfway or two-thirds of the way up. Then start to adjust the speaker volume until the sound coming out of them reaches a comfortable level. Doing it this way will ensure you've got room to turn it up or room to turn it down using the audio interface monitor knob. Your monitors might have settings for LF or HF trim. These switches will boost or cut the low frequencies or high frequencies. Choose whichever settings suit your taste, but make sure that these settings are set the same on each of your studio monitors. You may also find an input sensitivity switch on your monitors. Watch this video I made to learn more about plus 4 dBU versus minus 10 dBV. This has to do with the line level voltage coming from your interface. You can further optimize your system by adding acoustic treatment to your room and using a system correction software such as Sonarworks. Watch the video on your screen to learn more about these options. Thanks for watching.